Gustav Meyer was a German writer, known for his many mystical, fantastic works taking place in Prague, written under the name Gustav Meyrink. Born in Vienna in 1868, the illegitimate son of Baron Karl von Warnbühler, minister in the Kingdom of Württemberg, and actress Maria Wilhelmina Adelheid Meyer. He lived on the road, travelling with his mother to wherever she could find an acting part. He initially went to gymnasium in Munich, then Hamburg, and finished his studies in Prague. In 1885, he was abandoned in Prague by his mother, for which he would never forgive her. He was socially active, participating in rowing and sword play, while dressing in a very extravagant manner, taking on the role of a dandy. He organized spiritist seances, where he consumed hashish and opium, and co-founded a theosophical lodge, Zum Blauen Stern, in 1891. In 1893, he married Aloysia Zertlova. In 1896, he tried to marry Rainer Marie Rilke's niece, Philomena Berndt, but his wife refused to divorce him. He spent three months in prison in 1902 on bank fraud charges that were later dropped. He moved to Vienna in 1903, marrying Philomena in 1905. Later he moved to Starnberg, continuing his interest in Buddhism and ancient India, but got into financial troubles, having to sell his villa. He died in 1932 at Starnberg. He is most well known for having written the novel The Golem. However, he wrote many other novels and short story collections between 1903 and 1927. Today we shall be reviewing Walpurgisnacht from 1917. The story begins at the Elsenwanger Palace, where a group of aristocrats and imperial officials gather for a party of whist. These people are so divorced from the modern world they consider one of them visiting the nearby city of Prague, or the world as they call it, as something utterly scandalous. Soon after they get over the shock of one of their number braving the forbidden frontier, they are interrupted by the sudden appearance of a strange man walking along their garden wall before falling down, seemingly dead. Taken to the portrait gallery, he is recognized as the actor Zrzadlo. After he wakes up, his face and voice transmogrify into a perfect effigy of Baron Elsenwanger's late brother, to the Baron's great shock and consternation. An old woman and former prostitute comes to fetch him, but Tadeas Flugbeil, the Emperor's personal physician, follows him, fascinated, and convinced he had seen him somewhere before, ending up at the disgusting cottage of the loose woman with which she had had an affair forty years ago, and who forces him to dance with her to his great disgust. This same old woman later gets visited by a student, calling on her in her capacity as fortune teller as she can no longer work as a prostitute, and among other things, she says the poor violinist will become emperor. At the same time, Prague, as the whole country, is gripped in the froze and privations of World War I. This in turn fuels the rabble of the city into a rebellion, a rebellion led by madmen who pick the violinist and carry him in a procession through the city in order to crown him emperor of the world. At the same time, our actor Zrzadlo wanders around without his own identity, taking on the identity of those around him, while a violent, nightmarish, bloody revolution rocks the city, occurring on the day of the mystical Walpurgisnacht. The novel is a bloody tour de force and is one of Mehring's best. While also not being weighed down by the mystical subtext which can make reading his other novels somewhat difficult. It is one of the great works of the fantastic genre and should be more well known.